my name is Vu. I'm a Dean of Education for Jealous. I've been in the nail industry for about 20 years and um, done celebrities, done the covers of Nail Pro, done a bunch of stuff in this um, industry. And one thing I can say, it's a great industry. It's an amazing industry. Met my wife in this industry, met my grandma from this industry, met my mother-in-law from this industry. Um, all the positives I've gotten in life are from this industry, but it's tough. It's a tough road, um, but there's a lot of open doors that open up that we don't think about. Uh, a lot of times when it comes to nail techs, nail techs think, my only dream, my highest goal is to own my own salon someday, but there's so much more. There's so much more. You can end up being a, a artist for a company that will pay you six figures easily. You can make as much as a lawyer with a nail license. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Be like this. <laughs> no, but actually there's so much, there's so much. And if you guys really want it, as go after it and sometimes these doors will just open up for you um how it started with me was every door was closed when i first started doing nails about 20 years ago no salon wanted a man working there especially a man all tatted up so i couldn't find a job anywhere so i started looking into nail magazines if you guys never picked up a nail magazine check it out there's a couple really good ones nail pro and nails magazine Peace out, Mindy. Great job. Those nails were awesome. Oh, honey, I'm going to sit here in the back and make faces at you. All right. Make, uh, good. Keep grandma company. Um, hey. My grandma's 89 years old, so she, she doesn't look very frail. <laughs> you need babysitting. <laughs> grandma's put up with a lot from me. <laughs> and I've never thought that doing nails would have me travel around the globe. And everywhere you really think of, like every continent, been there. So, and I never thought it would have happened from doing this. I never thought <laughs> these gloves are so tiny. I'm getting a new one. But, um, you know, there's so much available out there, guys. And from someone that's probably going to be one of the, the guys or the and the people that have been in this nail industry that's failed over and over and over and over again. I failed at so much. I've tried. That's what made me really get back into it and really want to achieve. Be able to get at the highest level of doing this and then being able to teach other people. So I think that's one of the biggest joys you can give is giving back. So for me to be able to Sit here with you guys. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm struggling here. I think I have to just do this one without it. These tattoos are covered. So, if you guys have never heard of the company Jellish, um, family-owned company, also they own Artistic as well. Owns Entity, the huge company. Before. I worked for Jellish, I worked for a company called OPI, and I was the artist for OPI for 10 years. And um, once I came to Jellish, I've known the owners for a while, and a lot of this industry, I find that it's the people you know. You get to know some people that have connections, these people give you these connections, and then next thing you know, you're talking to owners of major brands, they want you to come work for them, and they're willing to pay you a huge amount of money for it. So there's a lot of little things that you can find out. So Jellish being a family company, it's the, it's the last family company, which I find amazing when it comes to nails, to, for it to be a family company at this level, where they're making some of the best products you can find. And if there are any issues, since it's family owned, you don't have to deal about the, the board of directors. You don't have to deal with your your normal corporate world, you could say, well, I met that guy Boo at the class. Let me give him a call and say, hey, I'm having a problem with this bottle. At least I can get to you right away. And I can say, I'll call one of the owners and say, hey, what's going on with these? Can we check, check that batch? Can we go back and check the retains on that? 
So there's a lot of things we can do as a family-owned company that, that can help you, the, the users of our products. So we make it so things get done fast and we can do it really quick. Um, there are three owners of the company, Danny Hill being one of them. And he's also one of the guys that taught me how to do nails back in the day. Um, there's also David Daniel and Gary Don Tingler. So three owners own Nail Alliance. Nail Alliance owns Jellish, Morgan Taylor, Artistic Entity, Red Car, on and on. They own a lot, amongst the three of them. <clears throat> Let's start this off in a good way with some free polish. <laughs> this one's called Seafoam. How many of you guys have heard of that color? Well, good thing about Seafoam is Morgan Taylor also has matching gel polish. And I'm going to have to short you guys, but Thank come you. back to you guys later. Um, being a gel polish and a, a, a lacquer, so I just hand you guys out some lacquers. Lacquers are great. Morgan Taylor, a lot of, a lot of people don't know, is that the same people that make that come up with the bulk of the ingredients to make OPI also provide the ingredients for Morgan Taylor. So, and the, actually, the a lot of the ingredients in Morgan Taylor cost slightly more than OPI to make. Hmm. So even though OPI sells for a little bit more, this actually costs <coughs> more to make than OPI. All right, so I'm going to show you guys on one. Let me see if I can, <clears throat> right? Put on soft gel tips. You guys have probably seen them before. You guys already know what they are. They're these, um, they're these clear tips like this. They are not ABS. What they are is a very special plastic that has a lot of flexibility around that cuticle area. So you can see how that bends. A lot of flexibility. It's very thin here at the cuticle, and then it will taper off into being slightly thicker at the tip. So most of your strength when we put this on is gonna be right here where that natural nail is, filling in that void when you turn the finger over and I weighs a little bit, I know it's a little uncomfortable. But there's a void, there's a gap in there, that cavity in there, and that cavity can be filled with two different products. Well, it's actually the same exact product in two different forms. So it's called soft gel tip adhesive. And it also comes in a jar for those that are more comfortable using the jar, or some of us call it using the pot. I use pot, but in a different way. So a couple of those things there. Different methods of application and how it goes on is very, very crucial to, to whoever However, you're comfortable using a product, whether you're comfortable using it with a brush and applying it yourself or having the brush already in here. What I find, and I'm going to be pretty brutal and honest about this, is I do find it's very hard to get every last drop out of here. Hmm. You guys that have used this will know that a lot of it tends to stick to the, the inner walls of that bottle. So sometimes you have to go and get a scraping tool and go in there and try to scrape the last drops out. That can be a big pain in the butt, and a lot of times we don't want to do that. So that's when a lot of times we want to do this, because you can get to the bottom. If we are working on a solution, we heard your complaints. I hear your complaints. So I them on my emails. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> but heard a lot about this, keep hearing a lot about it. So what we're working on is putting this in a tube, like a toothpaste tube, so we could just pour it onto the tip, or onto the nail, however you like to do it. Get every last drop, and no bubbles. So, it's gonna be great. <coughs> um, I like the poly gel too. Just like poly gel, but yeah. skinnier. Skinnier. Yeah, and um, not as hard to squeeze. So you guys have squeezed poly gel, and just like, just bottom bursts out or something because you're squeezing too. This is not going to be that big of a struggle. Now, a lot of times people get this mixed up where they think that the soft gel tip adhesive is like, oh, it's so thick. It's meant to be thick. However, we did have a batch where if you did run into some that got a little thicker, 
please contact me and get that worked out for you. Um, but it is meant to be a very thick product and it's meant to be thick to give you that strength. A lot of people need that strength when you're relying on this tip to hold for two to three weeks on a nail. You need that, that strength and you also need a great bonding agent. Something that will bond to the natural nail and something that will bond to the tip. That's where tip primer <coughs> comes in. A product like the tip primer is going to create adhesion to the tip as well as the nail. Before you put on any of those products though, being a nail tip, we always want to make sure that the surface we're working on is absolutely pristine and clean. Just clean as little damage as possible. Sometimes you'll see red rings in the nails. Those spots are going to be weak. It, um, from someone over filing, over drilling, by the time you get to them, those lines might still be there. Those spots are going to be weak. Um, so, and those spots being weak, you need a product that has some strength and and some flexibility because those those nails are still going to they're going to be weak, but they're still going to be flexible. And you'll need something with strength and flexibility, and that's where you'll get this. And you'll have the primer to get everything to stick. So. For my client today, she doesn't want it to stick. She probably gonna, she didn't want to walk around with one funky hand, so she's probably going to be able to pull pull these off. So one of the things that I like to do is I'll still want to make sure the surface is nice and clean, and we're going to use pH bond. For those of you guys that don't know a lot about pH bond, what it does is it's very similar. There's a lot of very similar products out there, and they'll. The column pH balancers, pH this, pH that. What it's really doing is it's bringing that pH level to right around a seven, right, right in the middle of that pH scale. And we find that that's the best level for products to stick on a natural nail. Notice I said natural nail because what it does is it changes the pH level on a natural nail. When you put this, on a tip, it's not going to do anything. There is no pH level on this. And so um, it's only going to go on a natural nail whenever you're using any pH type of products. So I'm going to use pH bond. We're going to dehydrate and pH balance. You'll notice that when nails are done very well and when nails stick on very well, it should be a very dry looking surface. It shouldn't look oily, it shouldn't look wet. So very, very dry. It's okay to put this on and having everything look dry because it should be dry. If there's any type of oil or residue on the nail before you're trying to put on product, prepare for that to lift. And if you're getting things on, let's say the cuticle or the skin area up here, prepare for that to lift too. That's going to be the first places where things get loose is when things get on the skin. So we want to make sure we avoid putting <coughs> anything on the skin. Well, Bless you. Yes, me. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, one thing that people mess up a lot when they're doing these. How many of you guys have tried doing soft gel tips already? Come on quite, quite a, Oh, maybe. How do you guys? Let me tell you, it stinks. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't stay on. But I'm doing Cure Sky, so All right. it must be her product. It might be a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. Um, one thing you want to make sure you do when you're doing these is make sure you're holding tight, tight pressure. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put this a little bit closer so you guys can see here. Up uh, close. If I put the tip up here where the skin is, let's say I put it up there where, where, you can, where it's touching skin, it's going to come loose there. All right. I would need to push that skin back way far back, which I, I don't like doing um, because there's a lot of parts you could damage back there. The matrix is back there for the nails and it's going to continue to grow cells. So your cell reproduction is all back here. And if you damage where the cells reproduce, then when the nail continues to grow out, sometimes have you guys seen when someone slams their finger in the car door and it looks like a raisin? Because the cells are, don't know what to do. They're growing all funky. They're going to grow. Most times it does look like a raisin. <laughs> um, we don't want that. So you can actually cause that by pushing back a cuticle too aggressively. So I would rather have the nail lift than a nail become a permanent raisin. So always take into consideration when you're pushing back cuticles not to damage that area. I didn't even push this back because I'm not even going to touch it. I don't want to get that far. 
but I want to make sure my tip fits nicely. And you see the free edge of my thumb, right where the tip of my thumb is? It's right to the free edge of her finger, right? Or the free edge of her nail. So that would mean where my thumb is, <clears throat> I would have to go all the way down there with my tip primer which I see a lot of people when they're doing this, and a lot of times it's separating because they're not putting their tip primer all the way to where the tip of my finger is. What they're doing, what I see a lot of people doing is just putting it right where the number is like that, which is only covering half. So only half of that nail is gonna have the product's only gonna stick to the tip. The other half's gonna come right off. Not have that ability to stick that far. What you really need to do where however, whatever area is making contact with that natural nail, that area has to have the tip primer. So all the way down there, yes. right? So you gotta go all the way down there, make sure you get that. And then here's a tip for when people have odd shaped nail beds. Not everybody's nail bed is gonna be <coughs> perfect and, and fit this perfectly, but there's a way you can cheat that. And the way you cheat that is putting on a very thin coat um, I'll take my soft gel tip adhesive. So you guys here, we're gonna put on a thin coat, making sure we cover the two side walls here, making sure that those two areas have enough product, just in case the nail is flat, just in case the nail is, say, ski jump nail, any of these odd shaped nail beds, <laughs> when you have product there, it will adhere. Grandma. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so a very thin coat. We're going to go ahead and just do a very, very thin coat. We don't need a thick coat. Very thin is okay. Just like that. And you'll see it's like I pulled down, and whatever came off that edge here, it'll just retract back. But then that's usually not enough to fill that nail. Usually it's not enough to fill that whole cavity. So what I will do then, I'll take my brush here, I know. break a little B at the end like that. Little B. Now, when I put the nail on there, pressure is extremely important. So it's extremely important that we have a light like this, that we can have both hands on the nail while this is on. Right? Sometimes like, Especially when I'm on camera, I find that when I try to touch it and turn it on, it doesn't want to turn on when I'm on camera. Right? I'm going to hold my finger right up in the camera at a 45 degree angle like this. I'm not going to touch that cuticle area all the way. I'm going to press it down and slide towards the cuticle. You'll see the product getting towards the free edge. As it's getting there, I'll use her to turn the light on. And you got to maintain good pressure here. you got to hold that tight. It's very similar to acrylic. You're very first, when you put down a bead of acrylic, that bead, you put it down, you gotta press it down. You gotta force it onto that nail. And it will, that very first bead, when you push it in and you press it, it's gonna start adhering. But if you get it on the skin, all that work that you did might become for nothing. So it'll only need to flash here for about 10 <coughs> seconds. I'm gonna put this really up close. You see here, nothing seeped. If anything does seep, right now is the time to clean it up. Um, right now will be the time to clean it up because it's not permanent yet. It's not that 14, 21 day wear yet. Not until it goes into the 18 D with your big daddy right here. Once it goes in there, there's no cleaning up. Okay, you got stuff all over the place and uh, you already went in there. Forget about it, girl. It's your design now. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to tell your client, come back in like three days. I think I might have missed something. <laughs> <laughs> when her nails off. So very important. These, these products, guys, they all go together and they're designed to go together. So we design a lot of these a year ahead and sometimes two to three years ahead. And so we've been working on these for years until you guys play around with it. Um, our CEO, Danny. Um, also, one of my mentors, he taught me a lot about doing nails. He comes up with all these ideas. So a lot of these things that we see here today that were that are in the nail industry, we got from Danny. You know, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but colored acrylic back in the 
early 90s, he started that. He invented color acrylic. LED light technology for, for nails. Yeah, LEDs have been around for lives, but not, and for nails, it's only been around for about 10 years. And he invented that. And he brought it into it. So a lot of gel polish, we use that every day. We use his inventions every day, whether we know it or not. But now that these guys are on, let's see how tight they are. Um, so the tip primer, is that kind of like when you like buff your nail? Yeah, so one of the reasons why we put it on the underside of the tip here is because we don't Oops, need to etch. Right? Yeah, so some some brands that don't use a tip primer, they need a sanding band yes. or some sort, totally and they start etching yeah. the underside of that tip. Yeah, yes. you're not going to need to when you have um, your tip primer. Okay, so when you got your tip primer, it's going to do the etching under on the underside of your tip for you. I think I'm done with these, but. Oh, yeah. yes, I do need those. Yes. Um, <laughs> now we're done with those. So, when it comes to, to putting these on and get, without getting them to, to, to pop off, I didn't put tip primer on her natural nail because she might want to take it off. If I did put tip primer on her natural nail and she's trying to price off, it's going to hurt like heck. Right? With these, they're pre made, pre shaped. <laughs> Practically the perfect tip, unless you put them on crooked. Okay, so my my thing is, I always try to line up the two side walls here and make sure the side walls fit. Because sometimes the nail is going to go along with the finger. Sometimes that nail is not going to go straight along with that finger. But as long as you get the side walls and the way that nail grows to go with the side walls, then you're good. These need very little filing. Just about that. Sometimes what I like to do too is I like to blend this cuticle area in a little bit to get that to be thinner. And that way you can get that nice and smooth flush finish. And I know you ladies, I know when you guys have any type of ledge and it's on your nail, you're going to pick it. Right? And you're going to, I know you're not going to. I don't know what happened. My nail fell off. But <laughs> when it happens, it, you, nails just don't fall right off. Okay? It takes some sort of, of friction, some sort of force to work it, to make it come off. So when your clients, if your clients are like, oh, I woke up this morning and it felt, here, there's probably something where you had something to pick at. She had something that made it available for her to start working at that product to pick it off. Try not to give them anything. Oh With these, it's a little hard because there's they can find edges pretty, not like an acrylic or a gel nail. Those are a lot harder for them to find. So with these, just try to make sure that you get that area blended really well. Sometimes I do this before I even put the tip on. Like some of the clients that I know the sizes for them, I already blend that cuticle area with, with my drill or with my, my file. When I have it blended, it's so thin that it's almost like a razor blade thinness. So that way when I press it on, all I have to do is buff. And that area is nice and smooth. When doing gel, let's say I was gonna do, let's say I was gonna do lacquer on these nails. And if you're gonna do lacquer, Morgan Taylor lacquer, great lacquer. Use it right here without any buffing. But if you're gonna do, let's say, a gel finish, you're gonna need to buff that shine. Okay, you're gonna want, want to buff that shine because lacquer will will bond to this, this material um, and most artificial nail materials pretty easily. Where gels, if, if that surface is too shiny and too slick, it'll start to lift there and start to peel there. So I'm going to use all these designs with gel. I'm going to buff okay. that surface. It should look like that. It should look nice and buff. Always giving support using your finger to support that free edge. That way it doesn't feel like this. It feels like much better, right? You don't feel, it doesn't feel weird. Another thing about filing <coughs> is when I'm trying to straighten out a finger nail and it looks, she's saying, oh, it looks crooked. It doesn't look right. I want to see what she's seeing. So I flip her hand up this way so I can see exactly what she's seeing. And when you're doing this, you want to squeeze that nail tight. And then you can adjust it like this. 
But if you're not squeezing tight, it's going to feel like this. Very fun, right? You don't like that. It really feels super awkward. Pretty sure you guys, you guys know all about super awkward. <laughs> not like that. <laughs> but I would say women go through some pretty painful things that men aren't typical. Like men don't know the pain of beauty. Most men don't. Some men do. Um, when I first had my first gel nail done on me, I thought I was gonna. My hand was gonna catch fire. <laughs> Spontaneous combustion oh. was going to happen to my finger right on the spot. Um, and most of the men that I've, I've worked with in this industry, a lot of them aren't ready for that. So I, I get all excited when it's a guy's first time getting <laughs> gel put on his fingers and it's going to burn like crazy. I'm almost like, yeah, do it. Come on. <laughs> I still do it. <laughs> And I'm one of those, I'm super sensitive to any of that, uh, what we call, and we call it exothermic reaction, but what most people call it is just, it burn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got these surfaces nice and buff. One thing that you want to do is after you buff, make sure that surface is clean. Sometimes we'll just take a duster and kind of dust it off. But what if your buffer had oil on there? Right? What are your buffer? What are you like uh, uh, rubbing on yourself or putting, putting your own grease and oils on there? Now you're putting it on the nail. Now you're cross contaminating your oils onto the surface of that nail, making it harder for anything to stick, even though you went through all that work hmm. when you could have just taken some nail surface cleanse and a lint free wipe. Is that great? And just done a quick little wipe. Now, this does have a little tiny bit of acetone in it. Not just straight up alcohol, it has a little tiny bit of acetone in it, so that's why I just do that real quick. I'm gonna let it sit there because this plastic on those tips, it's, it's not an ABS plastic, but it will break down very, very fast. It will break down in about five minutes. The thing that does have a hard time of breaking down, soft gel tip adhesive. This has a hard time breaking down. Sometimes when you soak off, you might notice, hey, there's still this number on there, on that nail, right? Yeah. That's number with a diamond shape on there. That number with a diamond shape on there is the impression of the tip left behind on the nail. It's not actually the tip. Okay? It's not the tip. The tip is melted, gone in five minutes. It's actually the soft gel tip adhesive. So when you touch it, you'll feel that it's embossed. You'll feel, the, you'll feel that diamond. You'll feel that number. The tip is embossed, that number on your nail. So, I'm going to do a gel finish here. I'm going to do a lot of blooming gel looks. Have you guys had to play with this yet? Oh, yeah. All right. Sometimes it's a little hard. It blooms a little too fast. All right. Let's just show you guys a few things here. Spring collection. I'm going to have to pick one of these colors not to do on you. We only There's six colors. And only five finger. Okay, so <laughs> gonna have to <clears throat> cut one of these fingers out here. Let's let's, let's not use this guy. Cut one from the list there. And we'll start with these. This is a beautiful pink here. This one's plant plant one on me. Yeah, it's clear, kind of glittery looking. Um, so I always like to start right in the middle, switch to the side, and the other side, and right back down the middle, and then a light cap. You won't notice much shrinking with jellish. With jellish is uh, a hybrid formula. For those that don't know what hybrid means, is it means it's part gel and part polish. So that's why they will say gel polish on there, and that's where you get the name gelish. So it's gel polish. That's where the name originated from. The G 
The owner, the you guys up. Danny is a huge country fan. Puts all those Garth Brooks concerts. Hey, hey, you guys are a Garth Brooks fan. That's the Garth G. That's the Garth G. Correct. <laughs> No way! Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I was at, at Danny's house and we were watching, um, mm -hmm. we were watching The Irishman and uh, the Garth Brooks thing came on. He's like, you recognize that G? And I said, yeah, that's Garth Brooks G. He's like, you dummy. <laughs> How long have you been working for me? I said, I've been working for you for five years now, Danny. He says, and you don't recognize that G. I'm like, oh, shh. Okay, yeah, I know. He goes, that's where I got the idea. I didn't tell you guys the name of the last color. That one was I Lilac What I'm Seeing. Uh -huh. This one is Best Buds. Or the right socks for this occasion. <laughs> it's off camera. <laughs> if you notice one thing, these are nice thin strokes. The pigment very is solid. very solid, very strong. It's almost got like that one coat coverage. We used to say that word a lot at OPI. That was like a big goal for us, was to be able to make gels that had one coat coverage. <clears throat> and it's very difficult, but here, it looks great. If we were able to pull it off, this one is bloom service. And we're gonna be doing some blooming gels, so I guess it fits pretty good. Of this, yeah. yeah, that's a nice, it's a little bit more translucent than the last two colors. You can yeah. kind of see through it a little bit, but still, once you get that second coat on, a lot of times we know exactly what the, the colors are going to be like with the second coat. And a lot of times, you have to tell your client, Don't worry, it's going to be okay. Right? Like, how many times you guys, your clients are like, Oh, I don't know, and you're like, That's the first coat, right? I just tell them, right. oh honey, no, no worry, only first coat. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're good for it. <laughs> Pick me, please. Come up with some of the wildest <laughs> names, right? Um, <laughs> we have a whole department that works on naming. Um, a lot of times I get a chance not to name, but to pick the colors that go into the collection. So a lot of times I'll sit down with them while they're picking the colors that go into the collection now. I think the last time I did it, they were like, Danny was like, maybe you should let them do that. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't do it too much anymore. But our, our main offices are in California. We're located in uh, Orange County. So you guys have ever been to California, been to Orange County. We're walking distance from an in and out you guys that like in and out who likes in and out in this what no in and out never been to california i think it's really good who did i neglect back here you guys i neglected so yeah um I always neglect people but we also have <laughs> gels don't worry we got gels too yeah, down I'm here. I'm here realizing why my two girls, the two girls up front, are always in the front now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they're always in the front. Until they're all the same oh, color, guys. <laughs> so the, you, if you guys trade? switch and trade with each other. It doesn't matter. It's still the same <laughs> color. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, see, one coat coverage, coverage looks amazing on the East Coast. Oh, one coat, right? Yes. Really great one coat coverage. But it gets better with a second coat. So that's why I always tell my customers, honey, no worry, one coat only first coat. We do the second coat later. And once we do that second coat, that's when you really get that color right. Always making sure that you do thin coats. Okay? When you do thin, you'll see the brush flare out. You'll see that the brush, you're really pressing down hard. If you're doing this, you might not be, you don't see the brush just flaring out. You don't see those bristles flaring out. Maybe you didn't put enough pressure. Nice long, just like Mindy does. A little cap there. I do like the blue. 
Are you guys putting dibs on who, yeah. who's going to get the colors? I'm sorry, who's going to... It's like prison yard no. tactics here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to change the green one for the pack of cigarettes. <laughs> Great nude. Yeah. Great nude. Right. 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 right down the road. <laughs> now you wish I put the tip primer on, huh? <laughs> <laughs> wish you could. <clears throat> You're killing me. I gave away the spring collection. We're supposed to sell those here. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't hurt if you only got one part of it, right? Yeah, you still have to get the other ones. With the second coat, this really covers well. You cannot see through it, through it at all. Very opaque. One of my little tricks when it comes to using blooming gel is to kind of set your colors out for a sec. So once I have these done here, you can go ahead and hear that. I'm gonna use my little cap here. I'm gonna set this color out for a sec. Let, let that sit out. You'll notice that when you let your gels sit out for a little bit like this, the, the polished part is gonna to start to evaporate and it's gonna to start to get thicker. Right, 20 minutes, 30 minutes later, it's, you come back to it, you're like, oh, it's a little thicker. I wasn't near the sun. I wasn't near my light. It's because um, the polish part is starting to evaporate. Once it's gone, um, you'll notice it's a little thicker. It's, since it's very well blended into the gel, a lot of those characteristics are going to stay there. But what you get from these hybrid products is you get less shrinking, faster soak off time. You don't have to shake the bottle like crazy in most cases. Some of these glitters and stuff like that, I do find I have to shake them up a little bit, but um, for the most part, there's really no shaking involved and very little shrinkage and fast soak off. So to me, that's what makes the gelish soak off gel polish one of the most convenient ones on the market, just because you get great pigmentation, you get fast soak off times, and the workability is really good. When we when I worked at OPI, we did pure gel. We didn't mix any polish in there. And it was, now they do, but back then they didn't. We would have to sit there, I'd have to sit there or stand in front of a class like this and say, all right guys, let's all pick up our bottles and shake for one minute. <laughs> and we yeah. when you read the bottle on there, it said instructions, shake well for one minute. Oh so we would sit there and get the whole class to shake their arms. By the time it's time to do some nail art, your arms feel like jello and you can't even pick up your brush. So. Really, really good thing that we don't have to do with that. Blooming gel is something that we're going to put on top of this before we put our top coat on. And it's, we're going to keep it wet. I'm going to use a really light color like this light pink here. Did you cure them last time? Yes. So this color's cured. Okay. All right. This coat is fully cured. cured. This one we're going to leave wet. All right. So I like to do a very thin coat. Heard of some people doing thicker coats of blooming gel, and then when they start to do their design, it's lumpy, right? Um, a lot of times that could be because of your blooming gel was applied too thick. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit on my brush. It's not a whole bunch, not dripping or anything like that. I'm trying to get a very thin. You have to kind of be quick with, with blooming gel because it, it can bloom very, very quickly, depending on your speed. Kind of always been known as the guy that is extra, extra slow. <laughs> <laughs> My boss is like, all right, we got Boo on our team. We're going to kill it and come to, no. <laughs> slow. <laughs> going to be extra slow. So I'm going to get my color. It's only been sitting out for like five minutes. I want it to sit out a little bit longer, but um, it's okay. 
I only like to load up at the tip of my brush. You'll see that the other half of my brush is not being used with any gel. But you'll notice that when you have these designer brushes, your bead will start to tip and it will slowly shrink back to the base of that brush. And one of the things you guys want, would really benefit from when working quick is going back in, you load up your brush and then just touching the tip of it. Just touching the tip of it onto the product, bringing that bead to the tip of the brush. Touch the tip. When you place your bead onto the blooming gel, it's not cured, it's still wet, release a dot and then you can drag that dot. You'll notice that will bloom. You can go right back in, grab another one. And this will give you that soft watercolor effect. <clears throat> that is going to start to bloom out. It's going to become watercolor. It's going to become a work of art with very little effort. Once, it's get, once it gets to this spot where you like it, you want to cure it. So we're going to go ahead and cure that. Once I have that cured, I'm going to finish it however I want to finish it. I'm going to be lazy like I always am and use this no cleanse top coat. There are a couple bonuses and differences when it comes to no cleanse top coat. Okay. Um, how many of you guys have tried chrome and have had chrome chipping issues? A lot, correct? Mm -hmm. Got a solution for you guys and I got a way to make chrome from chipping. You just have to stick around later. It involves multiple products. It's not the easiest thing to do, but there is a way and there is hope for chrome to never chip. Okay. At first one, I was like, oh no, there is no way. There's no hope. This product's been out for 10 years. We're not going to, there's hope. I'll code it. Be gentle when you're doing this, by the way, because this surface, sometimes it, when you only care for 30 seconds and the pigments are very strong, you can see your brush marks through your design. Like I know now to be very gentle. I'm just lighting it. Can you like add enough? There. Yeah, you could, but you gotta be gentle because okay. it's a very sensitive layer. Once it starts to bloom, once this thing starts to bloom out, and just, let's say you're very hard on your brush, you'll see your brush strokes going through your flower, whatever design you're doing, you'll see it start to spread out. So just be gentle. Don't don't destroy it. You can be very easy with it. Oh, that's it. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is it? Carnival hangover. Please. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Girls in French. Oh, yeah. Are we polishing our nails already? <laughs> 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 Pass it all the way to the end, please. Who hasn't gotten this dark red yet? No. Oh. This one is called From Paris with Love. Oh, thank you. Not from Paris, but it is with love. <laughs> All right. One of the things I really like to do when, as a finish on these type of nails is doing that sugary, um, like especially on top of blooming gel nails, because you can really decorate these and get them the put highlights on them using the exact same color you used to bloom in the first place. I'm going to use a different color to sprinkle my powder on top to give that velvet look. But I'll do my highlights with this color. And I'll just... Uh, I'll put a dot right in the center here. Try to go over one side. Go back to that dot. Go over to the other side to highlight that. I like to do a lot of things with dots because dots are very easy. Any way you can make a dot, well, most people can. Um, and if you can make a dot, you can make a lot of the designs that are out there. I even started doing portraits with dots, all types of skulls with dots, stars with dots, so many things. At least you guys have seen that already, right? We've done that over and over in these classes. 
do appreciate that you guys do come out. And we'll add, that looks pretty cool, huh? Add some dots in the center of that. Using the same exact color. Cool. Now we're gonna give it that velvet look. Oh, brand new, new open. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do now? I got it. Oh, hi ya! <laughs> powder goes everywhere. <laughs> All right. Yes. Normally you're going to use your spatula or something. I'm going to use my brush to lit it here. You really didn't bring much stuff, did you? Uh, uh, me and Grandma packed light today. <laughs> she had to go to Waffle House. Uh. Oh, it was good, huh, Grandma? Oh, yes. <laughs> Love it. So once you sprinkle that powder on, don't forget to give it a nice little tap. All right, and then we're going to cure that. Okay. Sometimes I find it better to do two 30-second cures. Mm -hmm. It'll cure harder. It'll cure stronger. <laughs> Grandma! <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love doing these, these type of... Uh, Express dip powders. If you guys have never used Express dip as what it's intended for as a dip product, <clears throat> the great thing is that it starts to cure and it has activator built into the powder. So it'll start to get hard as soon as you dip in. I don't know if you guys have ever tried putting, gluing tips on and then going and doing dip powder and then you start to file and the center is all gummy and not dry yet. You won't have that problem when you're using that. Because there is activator built into the powder. All right, make sure you dust this off very well. I don't have my dusting brush, so I'm going to take a free wipe. And it's okay if you rub an alcohol or an alcohol with a little bit of acetone in it product. So I'm not going to worry that this whole thing is going to just come falling right off. I can go in here and rub it. Nice. And whoa, it all came off now. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. It's so <laughs> but yeah, you'll feel that texture. You'll get that that cool look, and it'll stay there. You can take showers. It's not gonna get stuck in your hair. <laughs> so you wood. won't put a top coat over it. No, no okay. leave it there. Oh, can you stick your hand back later? Feel that, please. It's gonna stay like that for two to three weeks. Very fun, easy, super easy thing to do. Um, another cool thing that you can do too is if you don't want to do everything with color, you can always use clear. Yeah. Okay, so let's say I didn't have a pink to go with that pink, and I just wanted that to be whatever color it was. You use clear. Here's another really easy thing we can do with blooming gel. All right, you that color. We're going to put blooming gel on the nail first. Right. Thin coat. Don't try to do it too thick. We're going to end up with some crazy lumps. I hate having lumpy nails. It just creates more work for me later when I have to try to buff and file those out. So I like everything to be smooth as possible, less work for me. Right? <laughs> less work. Anything to work less. Kind of grew up in that generation where this generation of younger people want to work less and make more money. Where they're like, our parents, it was all about, you got to work more, you got to get that OT. Yeah. Yeah, we're not trying to get OT. <laughs> not me. OT puts you in higher tax bracket. Oh, right, Grandma? No OT for me. All right, this one's a super easy one. This is a, like the snakeskin look where you're just dropping color. But one of the things where you want to really start off is doing it at the bottle. 
if you don't need a brush for that, just use the brush that you have in the bottle. You might want to have a little, if you're very heavy handed, you might want to have a little wipe here just once you're finished. So what I like to do is, I'll show you guys when I get my bead, looks pretty full, right? But I'm going to clear off some of that where I only have it on the tip. I'm gonna, since these brushes are a little wide, I'm only going to drop the bead right in the center here using the corner of my brush. And just, the reason why we go down the center so that when that spreads out, maybe the sides will get time to catch up to it. Once you're done with that, you'll see it start to boom really quick. Wipe the tip of your brush, back in the bottle, let that start to bloom until you like what you see. I think we're good with that. We'll go ahead and cure. Always, when I'm doing this, I always want to make sure I'm keeping my eye on blooming gel because that stuff can just run off and then it can run away and sometimes you'll never be able to catch it. <laughs> it's gone. So make sure you keep a close eye on it. Make sure that you're not trying to do three nails at once with blooming gel. Keep it down to one, maybe two. Um, you guys might be quicker than me, so you guys might be able to get away with two. I can only get away with one. There's no way I'm going to ever try anything more. And how about touch that? You know what? I'll <laughs> hear you again because I've seen where I've top coated and I've scratched that surface. I do recommend that you double cure blooming gel. Um, just because I noticed that this color here, best buds, it is very strong in pigment. So that pigment is very strong. Sometimes it'll take a little bit more time in the light to fully cure it make it as hard as it can be. Once I got that the way I like it, I'm going to go ahead and top coat this now. Like gator? Do you like gators? <laughs> My wife always tells me I'm never going to grow up and uh, probably won't, you know. Um, I had to bring my grandma with me just so I can behave myself. <laughs> I think I'm doing pretty good, right, Grandma? We didn't get any oh, tickets yeah. on the way here. Yes. <laughs> um. Grandma's 89 years old, guys. <laughs> Gonna hit 90. August 29th. You shocked I remembered your birthday? No, I know. Same birthday is my wife's birthday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Might not remember your own, but you'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Women all together drop hints all the time, I notice. It's really fun. It's nice. really nice. <laughs> as long as you listen. Go ahead. Yeah, just go ahead and do it. <laughs> That's the hard part, <laughs> listening. How many of you guys find that your men have a hard time listening? Yeah. <laughs> and it's not that we try not to listen, okay? We do try. We try very hard to listen. My husband tried telling me that his, uh, his loss of hearing is at the decibel of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> So you're, you're, are you a loud speaker? I am now. <laughs> <laughs> so he brought that characteristic out mm -hmm. in you. Okay, so what, when we put on this blooming gel, what do we want to do? Thin. Thin. Do we cure it now? No. no. L to the no, right? But we're going to start to make things bloom. I'm going to do a multicolor bloom here and kind of marbleize it together. Because oh. okay. you can still marbleize when you're doing a bloom gel. It really works out really nice. I, I think some of the prettiest <coughs> marbles you're going to find with blooming gel. I'm going to do different colors here. Blue that we got on you. 
Let's see how fast this stuff just spreads. That's why I'm saying you gotta be really quick. You wanna have your colors kind of close to you and your, your white, you need to wipe your brush. When wiping the brush, twist it, making sure it's nice and clean. When you clean your brush, acetone-based product, I don't care what anyone tells you, people are gonna tell you to use alcohol, don't use acetone, because it's gonna make the glue weak and your bristle's gonna fall out. Trust you guys, I've been doing this for so long, never had brushes need rogaine. I've always had the hair stuck together. I actually went to Disney art school and none of my brushes when I was in art school ever fell off. Be quick, quick as you possibly can. Make, put that dot, once you get that dot, drop that dot and brush. You know, once I put that bead down, I gotta run with it. You'll see how fast that spreads. Now we can just take the tip of our brush, if you want to, and we can drag through. Want to? Question if you want to. What's going to happen? Yeah, I think that's cool. I like it just more to one side and the other side more soft and bleeding out. Oh, I'll take care. Also, you can do the really nice roses that really bleed out. For that, you have to be extra quick about. Those, you have to let this sit a little longer. Now, if you want to surpass the stage of letting this sit forever, let's say you don't got 30 minutes, let's say you don't have that time, and your clients come into in the next five minutes, there's this, a product called Art Form. And it's in little jars like this. And it's a super thick, heavily pigmented art gel. You guys have seen me use it before. Yeah. Mix half of that with half of gel polish. And that will slow down how fast things bloom and how fast everything blooms out. It can save you a ton. I do a lot. Sometimes I do it on videos and I don't even tell people that I did this mix. People are just thinking it's just Joe Paul's, but no, I cheated. It's actually a mix. If you guys watch any of the Jealous videos, I probably do like 90% of them. And most of the times I cheat. And part of the, what I consider cheating <clears throat> is using the soft gel tips. Because now I have the perfect shape nail. It always looks good on camera. And you're, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to do 60 seconds here, right? With this top coat. Mindy would have came over here and slapped the glasses right off my face. It's, it's only 30 seconds. But we're doing multiple nails. And each nail is going to get cured over, over and over and over again. And not only are we getting 30 seconds or 60 seconds, we're getting sometimes up to two minutes. Yeah. Still got a lot of polish to give away. Still got a lot of stuff to give. All right, rose time, right? We want to see a rose. This, I want to be even extra thin. I don't want any thickness because it's going to bloom too fast. And you Keep in mind when you're doing a rose, and it's one in mind that you're going to do highlights. You're going to need highlights. So don't just give up as the rose starts blooming and you're like, oh crap, it bloomed too much. Now what I, I can't do anything. It doesn't look like a rose. You're still going to highlight. Okay, so, oh shit. Right. Good thing you told me. Stop, I me from, stop me from that. When the model saves you. <laughs> start. You can either start in the middle, which means that the center is going to bloom out first and be more aggressive, or start from the outside. Up to you. Um, I'm going to start from the outside, so I'll take the tip of my brush here, down my, my drop, and 
Do a little bit on the outside there and on the other side. Here, we go. Fill bloom. And I'll start on the other side. So what I started with the tip of my brush on this end, and I dragged out that way, now I'll start on this end. And you're gonna do the same thing, just opposite directions until you get to the center. Once you get to the center, you gotta be really quick. And then you're gonna do little C's. Little bit in there. So you're gonna let that spread out. And if it doesn't look like a rose right away, don't worry about it. You're gonna highlight it, okay? And that's what a lot of times we freak out. A lot of times when we're doing nail art, we just, we give up or we let the client throw us off and we let the client's reaction to it throw us off. Mm -hmm. um, funny story, my brother was uh, doing a celebrity, pretty big name. Um, <clears throat> take your was it Nicki Minaj? It was, it was someone up in Cardi that B. area. Um, Cardi B. Nicki. Wow. I'm gonna just gonna drive me nuts, but he was doing her design, and she had this look on her face like, what the heck was that? <laughs> and so my brother was like, "What? You don't like it?" And she is like, ah, "It's okay. I could live with it." And she's finishing up and. He start packing his stuff up and ready to leave, and she goes, "You know what? I really don't like it." Oh. He was just at that point, just like, "All right, I'm gonna take all this stuff off, and I'm just gonna get you black." That's all you get. <laughs> then she was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll stick with." It. But you, you can tell a lot of times from your client's reaction what they think of your stuff so far. Don't let don't let them throw you off. I've had so many people tell me. Different things. I had Mariah, Mariah Carey tell me that okay, I should find a new artist because this is garbage. Oh <laughs> yeah, there's been some stuff where it's like, what? Just but, tell them to trust the. Oh, you try to sometimes. And, uh, <laughs> my stuff was already done. It was already a finished product. She didn't like it, and I'm okay with it. Heartbroken at first, but whatever. I have to get over it. When I do highlights here on these on the roses, just you're trying to get on the edge of that petal. I'm trying to just get on the edge so you don't see where the two different lines are. But you'll notice it's not blooming anymore because I cured it. The highlights really, that's what really makes the difference. It makes it pop. It really does make it gives you that dimension. Yeah. All right, guys. Oh my God, this is a really who likes purple in here? Who likes especially purple like this? Everybody likes purple, right? Everybody likes purple. Right. I shouldn't be. Right, <laughs> 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 glass ball. You won't get in there. Thank you. Bottle thrown right in their face. We're getting people in the back. Yeah. Guys, I think I need to move up. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Always forgetting you guys. I'm going to sit up front next time. <laughs> <laughs> still got boxes back here, guys. So don't worry. I've still got stuff. I'm going to top coat this bad boy. Soft and subtle. I really like this soft and subtle. Yeah. Or you know, like and you can use blue to like get hotter, right? Yeah. On or when you do do it on top of the dip powder, just make sure that um you cleanse that nail very well because a lot of times dip powders have activators. Yeah. And you you use activator to get the powder to the <laughs> set and here. Gel doesn't like that. Right? Gel doesn't like so make sure. You clean the surface extra well, and it's not too smooth. It should be good. So if you use the gel method with dip powder, so instead of using like the, yeah, okay. it should be fine. If you're not too smooth, I would leave it at about a 150 or 180 grit finish, where there's something that gel can stick to and grab to. Okay. 
Um, and making sure you cleanse very well because if there's any residue of that activator, it's going to start pushing the gel off and then it's a nightmare from there. All right, our last one. Oh, I think we should do something simple that anybody can do. Let's think about that first. <laughs> no, very simple, very easy to do. Flowers in multicolor. I think it's always fun, very easy to do. Especially anything for spring. Most times in spring we want to do flowers and we want things that are easy to do, right? One thing that if you don't have a dotting tool on you and you have your brush, guess what? Your brush is your dotting tool. <coughs> you just take the back of your brush here and it is a great dotting tool for large, larger sized dots. So I wanted these dots to go larger. <coughs> Just using the back of my brush for that. You can do a couple more. Usually, about you can do like two dots. You'll notice that gradually they'll get smaller. Who <laughs> said bigger? <laughs> no, I mean like when they go on, they kind of spread out sometimes. Oh yeah. Like after happening. time, after they yeah. after you let them sit there, they will gradually spread out. They will start to to spread out that way. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and hear that. Really cool thing that when you're doing it with a like the end of your brush, your the end of your brush has to be kind of rounded. Yeah, it has to have some some roundness to the end of that brush. If it's flat chisel looking in, you're gonna have a flat chisel looking line. <laughs> but just keep in mind, ends like this, you'll have a smaller dot because it's here. When we're done, I like to do something a little different here. Is I'm going to take that same color that's the background and use it inside the flower. Take the dying tool and put one right in the center of that. Gives it a little bit more dimension. So it just changes the way the petals look a little bit. Do it to the other ones. When, whenever doing flowers, always remember where your center is to the flower. So for my flowers here, this would be my center right there. That would be my center. <clears throat> and I don't care if every petal looks the same. It doesn't matter to me. Look that. We're going to hear that. And then we'll do some vines with some leaves. Right? When doing like vine work and very fine line, make sure that your brush is super clean. I'm going to take the Staffen dish. Full of acetone in there. We're going to drench our whole brush in there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to twist, holding at a 45 degree angle here. So sideways, it looks like this. My brush is like that, sideways. Okay. And I'm twisting it in one direction, basically binding those bristles really tight together. That way I got a nice little point here. And when I do these fine little lines, Show you guys how you load how loading it up like I'll just go in at first make sure I, I get half of the bristles absorbed and then I'll just worry about that little tip and you just worry about getting a little bit on the tip all that matters so here let's do some little line work here line work I like to do downward strokes like this if you like to do these backhanded strokes that's perfectly okay something I'm comfortable with so you'll I always do these ones that go down like that. And you see how fine that little line is like that? And let's say I want to scroll a little bit. Let's say I want these to pull off. Little loops. Only using the tip of your brush. You're not pressing down hard, you're kind of floating right on top of that nail. When you got a really nice brush, 
you can do really great line work. So if you have a brush that has some hairs that are just hanging off from the side, or you got some real issues with your hairs or your bristles on the brush, you could end up with, doesn't matter how great you are or how much control you have, it's gonna be a nightmare. And I've had situations where I'm on a set and I have to do something, I forgot my brush at home. And then I'm like, oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> It's a total disaster. It always ends up being a disaster. Keys, the line work. You need fine lines. I love it. I really like doing portrait work on it. One thing I found that. When I was doing a lot of portraits and on nails, women never ever asked for their husbands. <laughs> <laughs> it was always my dog <laughs> or my cat. It was never, yeah, I want my husband. Like, no, no, never, never heard that. Did anything but the husband. do so many things to take us off over the years that I see them every day. I don't need to see them on my nails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know. <laughs> Men know this and I know that. Alright, I think this looks really cool. So we're going to go ahead and add our center. Um, let's close it our center. Yeah, how about this brown, brown shell? Of my brush for a dying tool almost down my hand, which is taking longer. So, <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and cure that. Oh, that's curing, guys. Let's make sure that we get through. <laughs> oh, 21 of these. I think that looks right, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I want these too. Who else has a tattoo of a nail polish bottle on their arm? No one? <clears throat> she does. I have watercolors, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Watercolors on it. Who likes blue? Oh, don't look at the price tag. <laughs> Caught you doing that Christmas, Grandma. <laughs> 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 How many of you guys have grandmas that are 89 years old? That's awesome. You do? Yeah. Mine's 93. My great grandma would like to be on this too. Here, take this one. Look at this one, her. <laughs> I'll wipe it off. Alright, let's wipe this off. We need taco. Oh, we need taco first. I mentioned multitask. <clears throat> so you guys ever want to do very nice line work? Clean those brushes and acetones. Get them super clean. If you have traces of junk on there, it's going to wreck your artwork. And make sure that brush is super clean. If you got to trim them, trim them. You're in school from your own brushes and you saw the bars are terrible oh, oh, oh. all of them are right. <laughs> all your all your gels are terrible no all the brushes oh i bet i bet well because are people sharing brushes in school mm -hmm. oh yes. yes that's a, that's, a, yeah, that's always a bad thing. yeah <laughs> i never see that being a good thing <laughs> Some people share brushes. Yeah, we just kind of have them in the right. drawer and we all just kind of like a free for all. How many of you guys are in school right now? Oh, girls! Listen <laughs> to the school girls. Thank you. You got a school girl here. And gels. Oh, shit. These are, oh. This is the good stuff. I won't move. I won't move. <laughs> We're next. No. Yeah, I, you missed me. Red or blue? You guys can decide between the two. Look at that. Wait, wait, let's fight for it. I have a flying thing, please. Can we do a, a, 
a duel to the death over a, <laughs> over a dough. Thank you. Come on. What are you saying? Oh, it's the same one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see here. A noon. All right, this, we are done here, but we're not completely done because yeah, I hope. <laughs> when you guys feel, let me give this a nice feel here. He's moved for the most part. Got a little carried away there with my thoughts. Then oil, oil is very, very important. When we, we do this to you guys, not only does it hide a lot of our imperfections, It always makes your your nail job just look so much cleaner too and less dry because we spend so much time making sure that the nails are dry, making sure that the skin is dry, making sure that there's no oil. But at the end is when you put oil on. My favorite part of any service is putting the oil on because I know I'm going to get paid. <laughs> it's almost over. <laughs> All right, it's time for that pay time. It's always a good feeling. I worked in an area that was really high in prostitution. So <laughs> we had this horrible problem where people would sit like the ladies, and I didn't get to. I don't work for free, um, but I work on a lot of ladies that they would say, "Oh, you know what?" Got my purse out in the car. I'm like, oh, you didn't even have a car. Oh. <laughs> and they're gone. And I'm like, I'm not gonna chase them. <laughs> Just go. Oh gosh. Uh, you guys want to take a look? Look, I'm gonna pass out my car. You guys have ever have any questions about any of the products, any of the steps? There is my number and email on there. Thank you. I do a lot of R and D. Or jellish and um, do a lot of. Sure. Yeah. Great. Thank you, guys. But I think we still got a few things to give away up here before we call it a day. And we get to ask a few questions. So. Okay. When it comes to <laughs> blooming gel, how long after you made your colors bloom do you cure blooming gel? Right away. Six to seven. Who said right away? Well, it's like right away after so that it doesn't end. You're right, but you're wrong. <laughs> it's 30 seconds. <laughs> All right. Close enough. <laughs> I love it, guys. <laughs> those smart ass questions. Uh, we just love so much. Right? The, the answers that we get from those smart ass questions become smart ass answers. Um, best buds. Oh, this is one of the spring colors. What makes the spring, like, what did you guys notice about the spring colors that made their color a little bit different? They're more like muted. Yeah. They have more pigment. I can't let you get them twice. But I can still answer. <laughs> yeah, they have more pigment. <laughs> okay, well you can get one of them. But yes, they are highly pigmented, except for the one you got. You got, you got, you got the bummy looking one. Uh, we decided not to use. 